if you think creatively and you want to go into the arts, it's just a struggle to be a kid with someone who's so closed minded and doesn't see that there's a gray area whatsoever to explore your passion, to explore your dreams. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing the new Steven Spielberg film, The Fablemans. This is a film that I also watched at TIFF this year. It is something that I did not want to miss. It is a very special moment for Steven Spielberg because he has never been to TIFF and he has been in this industry for so long. So I, I'm just, I couldn't believe that this was his first time at the festival and i had to go he has made such wonderful films with like this childlike wonder so much heart and like playfulness behind the camera he has made so many films that are emotional and sentimental and moving that it kind of works in his favor in the fablemans this was kind of like his passion project i feel that everything that he has done before has kind of been encapsulated in this film particularly this is like his his culmination of all of his work and it's similar to kind of how i felt about scorsese's the irishman is that he took everything from different films that had worked for him and he put it in the fablemans this is a very steven spielberg film it's very personal to him if you have followed his career this is going to be something that you are going to feel emotionally connected to whenever you have an emotional tie to a director you've studied his films you've watched every single thing that he's ever done you've you know watched interviews you've watched dvd commentaries you've just been so invested in this man's life and the way that he brings such incredible things to the screen you understand his vision his mind, and then he makes something that's so important to him and so meaningful to him about, you know, his own family. It's loosely based on his own family that you feel even more connected to him. And that's something so beautiful that Steven Spielberg and, and uh, writer Tony Kushner, they were able to capture that childlike innocence of um, a young Sammy Fableman who's played beautifully by Gabriel LaBelle. Like, absolute beautiful work from that kid absolutely fantastic he is the lead of this film and he had to kind of play a young steven spielberg that is a lot to do as like a newcomer okay and he got it like a standing ovation um after the film was done at the world premiere and i was just absolutely obsessed with his performance he was fantastic really strong you also have Michelle Williams playing Mitzi Fableman, and she is dynamite in this. She's fantastic in this. After watching this, I sat there and I'm like, Michelle Williams really did give a career-defining performance as Mitzi Fableman. She has done amazing work in the past, don't get me wrong, but there was so many layers to her character. There was so much complexity in her line delivery and the meaning of certain words and pieces of dialogue. I think that what kind of unfolds in this film is something that will resonate with children, actually, who have, you know, have had a struggle with their parents. There's always that one parent that you're closer to because they respect and love your creative mind. And I think with Sammy Fableman, because he wanted to be a filmmaker and he really just saw things in a different light using, you know, his creative side, he was tied to Mitzi because she would, you know, she's a pianist, you know, she would play songs, she would sing, she loved life, she loved living. She was so vibrant and there was like this urgency to live, to do as much as you possibly could and like live in the moment. And Sammy was tied to his mother. He was also the oldest out of, I th believe it was two sisters as well. So there were like three children and he was the oldest. So he got to see the best of his mother and he understood the worst of his mother because he was older. So I thought that that dynamic was really interesting. With Sammy's father, who's played by Paul Dano, more of like a reserved role. I didn't really 
you know, I, I think for for Steven Spielberg, I think it was great casting because it was technically his father. But his dad was more factual, number based, X, Y, and Z structured to kind of like lead a good life. He didn't believe in him as a filmmaker. He said, you have to go to school to do this, this and this to, you know, get a degree, go to Harvard. Like it was very like by the book numbers of what a father would do then. And it's a very divided family it's a divided mentality that many people many filmmakers many journalists or whatever field you're going into there is a divide there's always divide if you think creatively and you want to go into the arts it's just a struggle to be a kid with someone who's so closed-minded and doesn't see that there's a gray area whatsoever to explore your passion to explore your dreams. And that is the beauty of the Fablemans. That's probably the most interesting aspect of the Fablemans is the family dynamic. It's Sammy's dynamic with his mother that's so important. But then that dynamic shifts because once Sammy gets behind the camera and then this is Spielberg's ode to cinema and what the meaning of cinema can be to so many people, the perspectives constantly change. The person behind the camera can always catch something that others don't. And I say this all the time, whether you're a screenwriter, you're a director, you are a critic, you have different lenses to analyze films in different ways. That's why it's subjective. However, what I have in my head that I'm trying to look at the whole scope of the film is different from someone who's a director and is different from someone who's a screenwriter. And that is the importance of the middle of this film that ties in with the family dynamic and i thought it was it was a genius moment it is one of the most heartbreaking moments for mitzi and that's probably my favorite scene in the entire film with michelle williams the issue with the fableman is that it's marketed as this ode to cinema but it has like such a humanistic understanding of how people perceive things differently and then that's what he has tied into the process of filmmaking and maybe i didn't really get it at the time when i was watching it but the more i think about it the more i understand how both of those things merged in this film the pacing is a bit rocky it feels like it finds its footing in the second half i think the beginning is just like trying to get to the middle portion where that's where the story gets interesting and that's where Gabriel LaBelle Bell really shines. And then it takes a while to come to its conclusion. It's a long movie. It's almost three hours. I think it was like 2.20 or something or 2.30. It was, it was tough to get through. But I do think that this is like the definitive Spielberg movie. Like if you watch a Spielberg movie and you want to know how great he is and it hits all those points of like what a Spielberg movie consists of, this is the one that you're going to watch. So I enjoyed The Fablemans. I did. I don't want to say that like, oh, I didn't like it, but I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It's not my favorite Spielberg picture. I'm also not like a diehard Spielberg fan. So I, I can understand that there's going to be a different level of connection with the director. Like obviously with me, I'm a massive Martin Scorsese fan, so The Irishman kind of hit for me differently as his culmination of his work as I, I thought that it was. So The Fablemans is something like that for Spielberg fans. I thought there were some wonderful shots in this. There are so many personal moments for Spielberg and his journey as a filmmaker in this industry, and I thought that those moments were beautiful. You know, there's so many wonderful aspects of this film. It also feels a bit too excessive sometimes. Like they added so many things to kind of set Sammy's story and to develop Mitzi's at the exact same time. So it kind of felt like their characters and the development was battling a bit. I did give it a three and a half out of five on Letterboxd. It does have wonderful qualities. It just felt overstuffed and um, it could have been trimmed down a bit, but it is still a good watch if you are a diehard Steven Spielberg fan. So guys, please let me know in the comments what your favorite Steven Spielberg movie is. Mine personally is E.T. I weeped like a baby. It was so good. So let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.